Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Starting Line. I'm your host, Sarah Allen. Freedom of speech is a pillar of democracy. The First Amendment to the Bill of Rights of the United States Constitution is freedom of speech. This past week at the Minnesota State Capitol, we saw this freedom on full display as members of the public voiced their support or opposition for the same-sex marriage bill. The House approved House File 1054 on a 75 to 59 vote. This week's starting line looks at House File 1771, a bill that establishes the Student Religious Liberties Act. In the midst of the same-sex marriage debate, we interviewed Representative Dwayne Quam, who says his bill protects the freedom of speech. Quam, an engineer from Byron, is serving his second term in the Minnesota House of Representatives. He represents District 25A. Thank you, Representative Quam, for talking to us about your bill. Can you explain why you're sponsoring it? Well, basically, uh, you know, a lot of the bills are trying to define for the local schools things. And, you know, I thought we ought to also make sure that the founding principles of uh, free speech and freedom of religion are, uh, are in there. Because sometimes the students uh, feel intimidated and we really shouldn't allow the faculty, staff, and administration to intimidate the students from their constitutional rights. Under House File 1771, students may express their beliefs about religion in homework, artwork, and other written and oral assignments free from discrimination based on the religious content of their submissions. Homework and classroom assignments must be judged by ordinary academic standards. Where did your bill originate from? You know, a lot of it has maybe not been in Minnesota, but I've been hearing a lot of cases of where there is maybe a little bit of creep back to having administration restrict those constitutional rights. And kids, especially when they start getting to the age of you know, middle school, high, junior high, high school, they're starting to want to and try to express themselves. And if we don't allow them the constitutional ways and et cetera, it might frustrate and may, might cause the you know, less, uh, I guess, positive communication. I mean, frankly, when you push and you take away rights, and I've had teenage kids, they don't like that. And then they look for a different way. And you know, it's just fair to let them be able to express themselves and not infringe upon the schools being able to enforce safety and, and all the other reasonable controls. House File 1771 says, students in public schools may pray or engage in religious activities or religious expression before, during, and after the school day in the same manner and to the same extent that students may engage in non-religious activities or expression. Where do you see your bill going in the legislative process? Well, there has been uh, quite a bit of support in having it in the conversation. Um, I'm not sure that it'll ever uh, reach the House floor. It's been offered as amendments. In fact, uh, part of it on the bullying bill was accepted when they put back the First Amendment rights. So a lot of it is the conversation. And most bills don't reach the floor. But a lot of bills cause that conversation. So what bills do reach the floor are better. They cover a broader and uh, I think a more just perspective. Because too often a bill starts out a little bit narrower and too often it's just something that would work in the metro and then as you have the discussions, the amendments, you make it fit for more of the state. Nothing uh, is perfect, but when we have the debate, we bring all the different perspectives forward, I think we end up with a better bill. Idealistically, what would you like to see happen to House File 1771? Idealistically, that any time we do something in, in policy-wise 
for the state that is mandated, pushed down to the local districts, that we have in mind uh, preventing unten unintended consequences, but making sure that we reaffirm you know, the constitutional rights, the principles that the nation and the state were founded on. And if, you know, some people say, well, it's already there, it's settled law, but frankly, uh, I think if we repeat and, and keep to the forefront, you know, the, the principles that we were founded, then all of the bills will be better. Let's track House File 1771 through the legislative process. It's had its introduction and first reading. It was referred to the Education Policy Committee, and part of Representative Quam's bill has been amended on to House File 826, the anti-bullying bill, which has passed out of the House. Since Representative Quam missed the committee deadline, his bill will not have a hearing this year, but he's hoping to get the conversation started. We have a starting line update. In early March, we featured House File 464, a bill designed to give parents and guardians more control over what surveys their children or dependents take in school. Representative Mary Liz Holberg sponsors the bill. Under House File 464, a school district would need to get written consent from a parent or guardian of a minor or dependent child before administering a student survey or similar instrument that solicits information about the student or the student's family. On Monday, Representative Holberg offered an amendment based on this bill to the anti-bullying bill. Representative Dabney in collecting information for student records under this uh, bullying uh, bill, uh, do, you, uh, do you consider that as part of the process in trying to sort out what happened and to figure out if the bullying was related to um, a protected class of individual, et cetera, do you believe that the school districts would be asking children information about their mental and psychological issues, um, their sexual behavior and attitudes, or uh, similar things about family members? If I'm a school administrator or, or a teacher who's tasked with exploring uh, what just happened, if there's been an incident, uh, I wouldn't imagine that I would at, be asking those questions unless those are the topics that were related to the bullying. Representative Jim Davney did not support Representative Holberg's requirement in her amendment that in order to ask two students involved in a bullying scenario, a school official would first have to get the parents of the students two weeks notice in advance of the questioning. I'm not sure how you do that. Representative Holberg offered an amendment to her original amendment. This is a federal standard that requires that any uh, schools that get federal funding, which I think most of ours are, that they're constrained in their ability and the information that they can ask of children and students. And so my uh, A73-1 amendment mirrors that federal standard in the Protection of Pupil Rights Amendment. Representative Carlos Mariani asked people to not support the amendment to the amendment, saying it had not been vetted enough. I would ask members to vote no on this. Uh, we, we certainly, I mean, we have a bill introduced. We can, uh, we can uh, when there's a hearing request for it, we can certainly hear, hear this bill and, and be much more careful and deliberative, um, uh, you know, with its uh, proposal. Both amendments did not receive the necessary number of votes to be amended to the anti-bullying bill. You can learn more about this bill and other bills through our online news service, Session Daily. This nonpartisan news source employs a staff of professional writers, editors, and photographers that provide you with in-depth coverage of the Minnesota House of Representatives. You can also watch live coverage of committee and floor action on House TV. 
To see past bills featured on Starting Line, go to www.youtube.com backslash MN House Info and click on the Starting Line playlist. Coming up next week, Starting Line will have a recap on all the bills we have highlighted this year. And remember, thousands of bills get introduced every legislative session in Minnesota. All of them first have to cross the starting line. <laughs>